gorgeous day, another May gray day. I'll tell you about the weather in just a moment. On our show today, uh, we have another candidate running for sheriff. We have uh, David Harrington, and we're going to get to know him. He's the current mayor of the city of Aliso Viejo. Also from the Reform Temple, they are having their annual men's barbecue coming up, and Rabbi Joe Mendelson is here. In fact, I'm going to sit down with him first. We're going to find out all about that barbecue happening this weekend. Then from Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center, Lisa's going to sit down with uh, Dr. William Wallace, and he's the medical director of general surgery. And then finally, we're also going to bring you a segment over from Lexus, South Orange County, or South County Lexus, down in South Orange County. It's down in Mission Viejo. Uh, now, as far as meetings go today, there is only one, and uh, we're into budget season now. United has their MNC budget meeting that's happening at 930 in the boardroom. Now the weather, another May gray day, another drizzle uh, day out there. In fact, that'll probably last for another couple days, uh, probably maybe even into Thursday right now. This low pressure system, it's a cutoff low, and the cutoff lows kind of dance around, so you're never quite sure what they're going to do. But there is a chance of drizzle today, and then uh, morning drizzle on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, possible even on Thursday, Wednesday into Thursday, if this low kind of moves towards our area, we could actually get a little actual rain out of this, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, we are now into this May gray. In fact, uh, I heard on the news last night the record for May gray days in a row, or eight days in a row. Uh, we're looking at about five right now when it's all said and done. So um, we don't get this that often, this many May gray days, but that's okay. It's kind of nice. I like the drizzle. And then we uh, should be in for a little bit warmer weekend, certainly a clearer weekend coming up. Around the county today, uh, temperatures are about where they were yesterday. The beach communities are going to remain uh, fairly cool. Really, all of Orange County is going to remain fairly cool. As you can see, no, the inland is not 702. It's actually 70. And uh, foothills are 68. Arrowhead is staying up right about 59. They're above all this, so uh, they're nice and clear. If you're up in Arrowhead, Big Bear right now, it's nice and sunny up there, and Palm Springs about 90. So again, we're going to continue this. It's not unusual to have this many days in a row. Uh, we don't uh, have this kind of a gray, drizzly days you usually don't get in May, but I, I kind of like it. I can turn off my sprinklers, just enough moisture out there. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Diane's Hallmark is a family-owned Gold Crown store that is much more than just a card store. Our women's department has apparel, accessories, and jewelry featuring Vera Bradley and Bagalini handbags. Our religious department carries many different Christian books and Bibles, plus a great selection of Christian gifts. Of course, we have a large selection of cards and gift wrap as well. Come in and experience our personalized service. Do you hear but not understand? I have good news for you. A proprietary system for verifying hearing correction, verified best speech clarity, is now available through the All-American Hearing Network. This means hearing improvement can now be verified and documented. Your individual hearing correction is guaranteed in writing. Call today to reserve your complimentary private consultation and experience word clarity dialed back into focus on the spot. Try AMP, the world's smallest hearing aid, at an unbelievably small price, just $750. It's ready to go in one visit, comfortable to wear, and virtually invisible when worn. Yes, you can now have verified best speech clarity. Hear every word. Call today to reserve your complimentary private consultation and experience word clarity dialed back into focus on the spot, risk-free. Hey Laguna Woods, it's Ken. And Lisa. Did you miss an episode of this day? Not to worry, head over to youtube.com and search Village Television. Here you can find each episode of this day and other community programs such as Good Day OC, Discovering Laguna Woods, and much more. Just click the red subscribe button, then click the bell to be emailed every time we upload a video. Don't miss out. And subscribe today.
And with me right now is Rabbi Joe Mendelson. He is with the Reformed Temple of Laguna Woods. And they are having their annual men's barbecue coming up this weekend. I'd like to welcome you, Rabbi. Nice Thank to you. meet you. Nice to have you here. Thank you so much. And this much. is going to be a fun event. It's happening over at the wonderful patio over there at Clubhouse, too, right? Right. Right. And that's, that's a great, great venue. It's a beautiful venue. If it's really hot, then they'll have the uh, covering. If it's not, it's rolled back so you have sunshine. If you don't want to be in the sunshine, there's shade in the back. It's a great setup. Yeah, and I think, you, I think you're going to have good weather this weekend. Not too hot. Well, for you're sure, the weatherman. You know. Well, you know what? I don't always get it right. <laughs> Uh, so tell me about uh, why did this? Uh, why did you start this a few years back? We started a few years back as a fundraiser. It was basically for those within the temple, mm -hmm. um, also to allow the socialization outside of Clubhouse One, where the services are held. Uh, we just wanted to raise a little money, have some fun, and the men's club is there to support the temple, basically. Yeah. This yeah, is the first great. year, though, that it's going outside the temple and being opened up to all of the. Uh, Laguna Woods residents. Yeah, that is wonderful. And I want to mention too, it's not just a barbecue, you have entertainment there. And uh, the gentleman's name is Roy Sutherland, right? Yeah, Roy has been there, um, I think three of the last four years, and he is great. He is known as the karaoke king, uh, does a lot of singing, does a lot of uh, interacting with the crowd, just a lot of fun. That That is good. Now, can people, you mentioned he's a karaoke, can other people join in with him? I don't see? remember them doing okay, it, but a lot up. of people will harmonize. Yeah. He'll stick the mic <laughs> in your face. If you can sing, he'll probably use you. All right, that'll, that'll be fun. Now, uh, you're going to have all kinds of things to eat, naturally, the usual stuff, hot dogs, hamburgers, and all And, and all for vegetarians, veggie burgers. Okay, yeah. and, uh, and drinks, of course, watermelon desserts, all kinds of uh, the typical barbecue stuff, but right. it's a good way to start uh, the, the holiday weekend. It's a good way to start the holiday weekend. It's a lot of fun. It's relaxing with your fellow residents. Um, just all around good time. And that's and, how it was started and that's how we've kept it. And as you said, it is open to other people this time around. I want to mention that uh, it is on the screen, but it's $15 if you are a men's club member. Right. And if you are a guest, it's $18. And uh, if you go If you that show day, up the door, it's $20. it's $20. Right. Yeah. There are the green flyers to sign up at clubhouses one, three, five, and seven. Okay. And we really hope that people will grab the flyers, fill them out. Yeah, or, they, look or, like, they look like this, although this one's not color, but you right, know, you've you can, got the copy. Yeah, at also the bottom, to call, you can do it. Also, please call John. Yeah. Call John Dorman. Um, he wants to get that information so we, we can plan for the quantities of food. Yeah, very important. And his number is also on the screen is 949-859-2215. Uh, and uh, call John Dorman and that way you get on the list. And uh, you got to know, you want to know a good rough estimate of how many people are going to be there. And that certainly helps everyone out. Right. So again, this is happening Sunday, May 27th. Clubhouse to patio. Entertainment starts at three o'clock. The barbecue begins at four o'clock, and it sounds like it's going to be a great time. It should be. Uh, Roy will probably get there a little early, so people show up. They're sitting. They're relaxing. Everybody has a good time. All right. Very good. I know you. You got to run. You got another appointment to get to. I appreciate you coming on. And I thank you so much for including us in the TV show. Um, we really want to support the support the village yeah and thank want, you we yeah we get people on from village the village involved it's nice uh, we had someone on recently for an event i forget what it was it was a uh the food festival that oh I yeah was just huge it was you know yeah. we ran out of food in one hour anyone who went and did not get food i promise you there will be food next year we're going to double triple the amount of food that's coming yeah out. very good nice to meet you so thanks you take so much care, and we'll be right back Hi everybody, I'm Sean Thomas. Welcome to Sports Talk. Come join me here every Thursday at 11.30 a.m. for sports highlights, tournament news, and interviews for Laguna Woods residents and around the world. Hey, maybe even Broadway. It's a beautiful day for a ball game. Put it on your calendar. Thursday mornings, a great way to start your day with me and the Sports Talk way. Or even a triple's okay. 
I'll see you then. I have Pat Lustig, owner and general manager of South County Lexus with us. Well, thanks for having us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Beautiful showroom. Very nice out. I love it here. And tell me a little bit about what's going on from a relentless pursuit of perfection slogan that you have to experiencing amazing. Well, the relentless pursuit of perfection um, has been uh, like a trademark of, of Lexus for, and their slogan for 25 years. And a couple years ago, they uh, wanted to bring some more passion to the brand. And the products, you know, they, we, I think the world knows that they build the most dependable, reliable vehicles out there and got to be known as a little bit stodgy. So they wanted to put some passion into the brand and they've taken on uh, racing. Um, they've taken on high performance vehicles. Uh, they've done a lot of new things, made the cars sexier, uh, better handling. Um, Basically, the interiors have gone through the roof where you'd feel like you're in a, uh, a custom-designed home inside some of these cars. Mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So their move is to uh, get that expressed to the public and uh, let the customers come in and experience amazing. And that's really what's come about is these cars have become amazing. Exactly. Well, they're all here in the showroom as well as uh, out on the, the floor. So. Uh, everybody can come in and check those out. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, how things have changed for South County Lexus other than different just like you. What does that mean? Well, we've been for yeah, almost eight years now trying to operate our dealership completely different than most dealerships. The car buying experience, you know, we put customer satisfaction first and foremost in employee satisfaction as well. Mm -hmm. So having happy, happy employees obviously produces happy customers. So that's, we've been very successful at that. Um, however, same thing as just like Lexus trying to uh, go from you know, the relentless pursuit of perfection to experience amazing, we decided to change our slogan to different is amazing. So we're putting that energy that we, the same thing with Lexus and presenting the brand um, into our uh, customer experience at the dealership. What makes Lexus cars different from all the other uh, racing or sports cars that are out there today? I think they have that, that being that they've had the years of relentless pursuit of perfection as their slogan, um, it's, it's ingrained in every employee, not just our Lexus dealership, but pretty much across the country. Okay. Um, so in that experience through the shop, through the dealership, the delivery experience, all of the things going on is um, kind of culminated into an amazing experience for the customers. So with that said, tell us about the new product offerings that you have here. Uh, most recently, we have the uh, third row RX that uh, has come out where you have the choice of three row seating versus two row seating. Um, if you happen to have grandkids or little kids you want to throw in the back, it makes it uh, quite convenient. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, new LS is probably the most uh, long awaited vehicle. Um, the version that's been out there has been out there for quite a while mm -hmm. and there's been revisions of it, but this car is a totally new car. That's probably the most exciting vehicle that Lexus has come along with in a long time. Would you say that that's one of your more popular models? It's definitely the most, it's won more awards than any car in manufacturing history okay. um, as, a, as an actual model lineup. And so taking that amazing approach, the stuff that they put into this car blows your socks off. I mean, it's incredible. Um, there's different equipment packages on it that, uh, I mean, you got shiatsu massaging seats with 28 positions. Oh my. Um, you've got, you can get executive packages for rear entertainment. I mean, literally like a limousine. Uh, there's high performance models. Um, it's just absolutely, all I can say is the word is amazing. So if you were to take me behind the scenes here at Lexus, what would be some of the things that are the most important? The employees. Um, they're what makes everything happen. Um, it's a team. If everyone is not doing their job, it doesn't create a winning environment. So I would say behind the scenes, it's absolutely employees. Over the years, how has the car buying experience changed and what do you foresee the future to be like? Well, the car buying has changed because most people do their shopping at home. They sit behind a uh, computer screen, a tablet, a cell phone, 
Um, they do some groundwork uh, before they go into the dealership um, and test drive and experience the vehicle. They do a lot. And as time goes forward here, it's coming faster than we all expect. Um, the ability to buy and what they call the Amazon effect mm -hmm. is happening in the car business where you'll be able to, in not, not too near future, um, you'll be able to point, click, buy your car or at least reserve it and come down and pick up the vehicle and not go through the standard uh, negotiating process. That's already happening mm -hmm. uh, right now. Um, so that is a, a huge paradigm shift in the car business. I think that you'll find that uh, more and more of the vehicles aren't going to be just ready on the lot because the expense of storing you know, 500 cars for public just to get it when they want it, right. I think they'll have to uh, wait a little bit longer, maybe select their vehicle and maybe take six weeks or something to come in. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I see that as a, a cost savings benefit to the customer. Um, it's passed on from the dealership not having to go out and buy huge expensive pieces of real estate to store a bunch of vehicles. Right. And how, so. how have you changed? your business practices here you know, to accommodate that? Well, we're on the forefront of that. We're actually a one price environment. It's pretty simple. Okay. Um, customers don't like to feel like they got sold. They want to buy, mm -hmm. but they want to make those decisions themselves. So the tools that are being put in front of them will allow them to be able to do that and they'll choose who's the easiest to do business with. Okay. And I'm betting the bank that's, that's us. Excellent. Now let's talk a little bit about the Laguna Woods client. You've sold to many of them, they have lots of questions, and, and maybe they go online before they get here. Uh, what would you say to them, because they're the ones who are seeing this today, um, about your, your business practices and what they can look forward to? I would say probably the biggest thing is technology scares people. Um, I'm 55 years old, and when I went to school there was I didn't even know what the internet was. Uh, computers were not there. So I've had to learn this later in life. I'll tell you something funny about myself and my age is that it wasn't until I was 38 that my eight-year-old daughter showed me how to cut and paste. And it was like one of the epiphanies of life for me because the frustration level that I had of technology was this technology is supposed to help me and be more efficient. Well. It wasn't until that moment, so it was a big move. Well, I know that there's more people like me that when technology comes in front of them, these vehicles, they're highly advanced. But if, if you don't really appreciate it if you don't understand it. So at South County Lexus, we have full-time employees that are technology specialists to help our guests understand how to operate, how to use and benefit from all the technology that's in these vehicles. So we have that available here. Not every dealership chooses to do this. It's an expense, mm -hmm. but we feel that our customers love it. So programming your garage door opener to go to your house or your gate, your electric gate going in, to hit, okay. instead of carrying around a clicker, you have these available in your vehicle. Right. The programming of you know, your phone and your address book, um, the safety devices on these vehicles, mm -hmm. the backup cameras and monitors, side traffic alert, what side traffic alert is, is someone, let's say, let's just say pedestrian monitoring. Someone's walking through behind your car and you don't see them and you're backing up. Well, your car is going to stop by itself without you having to do it. Or you're backing up in your garage and maybe you don't see as well as you used to see and you're, you're going to back into the post of the garage where your car just stops on you. Right. Um, one, our technology specialists are trying to let you know that it's okay. The car didn't wreck the wall. It's actually stopped because mm -hmm. I've been there. It feels like... <laughs> It stops all of a sudden. Okay. Um, this, the safety is incredible. Today's driving, uh, you know, you're going to be able to drive vehicles a lot longer in your life mm -hmm. than what you may have in 10, 15 years ago. Right. So the safety that's in the vehicles is absolutely phenomenal. I've been seeing an so. awful lot of features that have that have been added now, like you're mentioning. So would would somebody come in before they buy the car to learn about the technology just so they can understand what they're getting themselves into? Or is it something that you do after the fact? Both. Okay. So um, as we've been sitting here today, I noticed that there's some customers in the uh, neighboring booth over here, but they were here early this morning and they came in to drive the vehicle and they were learning all the safety devices on that vehicle. Okay. So, and it's a lot. So a salesperson can't always 
have all that information available to you in a short period of time. Right. That's why we have these technology specialists to come in and assist. I think that's important, like you said, because you know at one point you're going to be buying a car, but then you want to ask specific questions, but you don't want to bother the salesperson sure. the entire time. So that's really great. All right, good information. Financing is a bit of a pressure, I think, for some people coming in, but now that the processes are changing, how has that changed? Well, they, before they come in here, they can actually go on to our website and use the calculators that are on there to determine, you know, they can actually, if they know what their credit score is, they can put their credit score in and get the actual financing. Okay. Um, depending on how they're either purchasing, leasing, or paying cash, they can put the type of transaction that they want to do. There's a incentive configurator in there that would tell you what maybe if that vehicle had some factory incentives, maybe a rebate or something like that, um, special financing rates. Well, that's all available before they even come into the dealership. Mm -hmm. So there's less stress when they come into the dealership. They can uh, pr proceed to find out everything before they come to the dealership and all find right. out what car works best for them. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. You're and uh, good luck. It's a beautiful showroom. Thank you. And if you'd like to enjoy the Lexus experience, you can go to their website at southcountylexus.com. We'll be right back. Looking for a change of scenery? You don't have to play golf to enjoy all that 19 Restaurant and Lounge has to offer. From a delicious breakfast menu to our delectable lunch and dinner specials. At 19 Restaurant and Lounge, there is something for everyone. Relax with your friends and family and take in the beautiful view from our spacious patio. Or enjoy a cocktail and appetizer in our lounge. 19 Restaurant and Lounge is a great place to socialize, enjoy a meal, or simply take in the view. Join us seven days a week and experience Laguna Woods' exclusive dining experience. Welcome back. Well, with me right now is David Harrington. You might know the name because he's the current mayor of Aliso Viejo. However, he is here because he is running for the Orange County Sheriff and uh, retired from there about four years ago and uh, City Council of Aliso Viejo. So a lot of experience. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, let's go first about your background, your uh, obviously your law enforcement background. That's probably the, the main topic, right? right? <laughs> um, so I started the Sheriff's Department in 1985. Um, I worked two years, one month, 13 days in the jail, uh, Central Men's Jail. I went to patrol, did patrol for uh, six years. Mm -hmm. um, I went to investigations. I worked um, economic crimes, fugitive warrants, sex crimes and property crimes. Um, I've arrested hundreds of people um, and it's a great job. It's an amazing satisfaction level job. It's really amazing. Um, I promoted to sergeant and, and did about another year and a half in custody as a, as a sergeant. And then I went to patrol again. Um, worked North Patrol, South Patrol, investigations. Um, pretty much did it all. I was uh, awarded the Medal of Merit in 2012 for innovations at the department. Oh, very um, good. I, I most of it surrounded um, getting uh, modernizing equipment at the department. And I created a training program um, called the core functions of patrol training uh, that made every day a training day at the department. Um, I tried to get it department wide. It's a tough sell sometimes to change things, but we tried. Um, so I was, uh, I was awarded that, that medal um, in 2012. Worked on the transition uh, for Yorba Linda Police Services. Mm -hmm. uh, they, oh, okay. they switched, Yorba Linda switched from Brea to the Sheriff. I worked on that transition um, and retired out of Yorba Linda as the Administrative uh, Investigative Sergeant. Um, took a month off and uh, ran for city council after that and now I'm the mayor. All right, so let's get into some, some of the uh, issues and um, one of them, uh, let's talk about uh, what some people may not know as Proposition 47, uh, there's SB 54, there's all these different uh, laws that have been enacted that a lot of studies have shown has really churned people uh, turn some of the, maybe the lower level criminals, but back onto the streets quickly. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, they can go in and, and steal something, and if it's under a thousand dollars, nine hundred fifty. Yeah, nine hundred fifty dollars yeah, is a misdemeanor. It's created all all kinds of problems. What, what's your take on that, and how would you kind of counteract that? Yeah, so being it's, it's a state law, at least at this. Sure. Point. So it's a there's a whole slew of 
So I'm going to touch a little bit on the background of all those laws. So yeah, you have please. AB 109 is the first one. Mm -hmm. um, it's Assembly Bill 109. It's called Prison Realignment. So Prison Realignment, what that is, it pushed a bunch of convicted felons out of the state prison into county jails throughout okay. the state. Right. Okay, but it also created two different classes of inmates, supervised and unsupervised release. So many inmates became unsupervised when they got released. And then you also have problems with what's called flash incarceration. So when they violate their, their terms of release, instead of going back to prison to, con to complete their original sentence, mm -hmm. they just go into the county jail for a few days and they get back out again. Okay. Um, so that's, that, that's, that's like the first hit. Okay, and that mm -hmm. makes us less safe when you do that. When right. you let criminals right. out of jail that don't belong out of jail, you make us less safe. Prop 47 um, was, was really bad, the Safe Neighborhoods and Safe Schools Act. It did neither of those things. It had nothing to do with either of those things. What that did was it, it decriminalized a bunch of criminal activity. And what mm -hmm. I mean by that was you took families made of misdemeanors, and then right. it did that, that retroactively. So when, what happened was people who were in custody for felonies were now in custody for misdemeanors. So they were able to mm -hmm. petition and get released from prison instead of being in a prison where they belong. Um, so then 57 comes along, the Let a Violent Felon Out of Prison Early Act. Um, that, because in the penal code, there's violent felonies are listed, they're defined in the penal code. Right. 57 changed that um, because if, if it's not in the penal code defined as a violent felon, then you're eligible for early release. So um, uh, unlawful sexual intercourse with an unconscious person is not considered a violent felony. Assault on a peace officer with injury is not considered under the penal code as a violent felony. So those people yeah, become yeah. eligible. And now you, you, uh, a judge just recently decided that 10,000 um, sex offenders uh, would be eligible for early release. And, and Governor Brown said, no, 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 I promised everybody. And the judge said, well, too bad. The law says what the yeah. law says. Yeah. So these things... These things get passed. SB 54 is, a, is the, uh, the sanctuary right, state right. law. These things make us less safe. When, when you're letting criminals out of jail who should not be let out of jail, mm -hmm. you make us less safe. I don't just live in Aliso Viejo. Okay? Most people don't just live in the city they live in. They live in the county, right. the state, and the country. I travel all over. So when you let criminals out of jail, you're making us less safe. Yeah. Um, and I think that's important to remember. So, uh, so all of these things, so w here's what I would do. First of all, you have to fight these, these policies before they get passed. If right. you're waiting till after the yeah, fact, and that's the which hard is what's thing, happened, these are, yeah. um, which, which is what's happened is that we, we waited too long. And now every time someone tries to fix it, um, Pat Bates has, has really carried the water for us at the, in Sacramento, but she can't even get her bills heard in committee. Mm -hmm. um, you have to fight these things beforehand. You have to engage the public and you have to really get people involved and you have to educate them so that they don't vote for these things. Remember, 47 and 57 passed that's right. in Orange County with over 56% of the vote. Yeah. So that's a problem. That's a problem because no one's educating the public and that's law enforcement's job. When you have a big bully pulpit like the sheriff's office, your responsibility really to the people is to at least educate them. Do what you can, everything you can. And that mm -hmm. wasn't happening. You know, I started, a, I started a pack to fight Prop 57. It wasn't successful because my, my microphone is pretty small. I talked to many civic groups, and it just wasn't, it, it wasn't enough. We needed right. more help. And one of the cause and effects of this that um, has been looked at uh, because of some of these policies is the increase in homeless, because a lot of these uh, low-level criminals, high-level, whatever you want to call them, are put back on the streets. Some have mental health. There's nowhere for them to go. And we have seen what happens uh, with the increase of the homeless and those halfway houses and those sort sure. of things. Sure. So, so here's, here, there's a lot of issues involved with the homelessness. Um, government inaction really caused mm -hmm. that problem. They allowed it to fester. Um, when, when you just allow people to camp um, yeah. wherever they want to and you don't enforce the law. Look, look the, this, this has been festering for a long time. It didn't just happen last night. The, this crisis has, has taken time. Seven years ago when I worked at the Sheriff's Department, I was a bike sergeant and we worked on that riverbed and we had a plan to clean it out when there was only four people under every overpass. Yeah. And, and this administration told us, no, we couldn't do it. Okay, fine, then what are you gonna do? Yeah. So we, the law needed to be enforced. We, we needed to be out there um, you know, cleaning it up back then. Uh, so with, yes, the sober living homes is also another mm -hmm. issue that really led to a lot of the problems on the riverbed because people were being curbed. They, they come in, uh, they get brokered into a sober living home, insurance runs out, they get kicked to the right. curb, they become homeless, they go back into the cycle of drug use, mm -hmm. and, and that adds to our problem. 
yeah, that's a problem. 47, 57, these, these, these laws, AB 109, they, it, it did add to the problem. But here's the deal, you can't hide behind that stuff. You've got to enforce the law. It's still illegal to possess heroin. It's still right. illegal. Um, I get it, maybe I can't take you to jail, but I can write you a ticket. You know who doesn't go to court? Drug users generally don't go to court. You know what their tickets become? Warrants. Right. They'll go to jail then. Yeah. So, so the, ex the excuse sometimes you'll hear is that you know, we couldn't do anything. That's, that's, not what a, that's not what a street cop should be doing. Right. We, we've got things to do, and you do what you can do. Yeah. Um, and, and, we allowed it, and it was allowed to fester, and we should have, we should have taken a much more proactive approach. Because it, had right. we done it at the beginning, when all of these other people yeah. are getting released, we can at least deal with the population as it increases in small doses. But now we're dealing with them, you know, there's a thousand people that we're trying to deal with. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, another issue that you, you're in a uh, unique position, being you are the mayor of Alicia Vieja. We're talking about the rising costs. Yes. Um, a lot of cities right now, including this one, they're seeing their costs skyrocketing for the sheriff's contracting with the sheriff's Correct. department. Um, most of South Orange County is contracted with the sheriff's department. Again, you're in a unique position. You have seen both sides. You have worked with both sides. What's your, what's your take? We've got, got about two minutes left. So okay, if you want to give so I'll try to be quick. Yeah. Um, so m my take is it's a failed relationship between the sheriff's department leadership and the contract cities. The 13 cities have banded together um, and are spending $300,000 um, on a, a study to mm -hmm. find out what, where all these costs are coming from and what other options are. Well, that, that's unnecessary. Uh, what we need to do is we need to look at different modeling on how we do our services, our police services. Um, what I think we should do is we should be sharing administrative functions with other cities. Laguna Hills, Laguna Woods, and, or Laguna Village, and Aliso Viejo are about the same size mm -hmm. as Mission Viejo. So we have um, two and a third lieutenants, right. two and a third admin sergeants, yeah. however they work it out in the contract. Mission Viejo has one, ad, one lieutenant and one admin sergeant. So why can't we do the same here? We would save hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, it would really bring our costs down. Because when you look at the contract, you don't look at the left column, you look at the right column. The left column is salary and benefits. The right column is what it costs after all of the overhead okay. is added. That column, if we were to do that, you would save, between the three cities, uh, we would share savings of about $700,000. Would they be as safe? The Certainly, because our safety, be doesn't, our, 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 our safety doesn't come from the, the bureaucrats in the office. Our safety comes from the men and women okay. who put that uniform on and drive the patrol cars every day. That's where our safety comes okay. from. Okay, so you're looking at more of the administration. Absolutely. Costs. Yeah, the All bureaucracy right. needs to be reduced. We'll bring the cost down, and, and we'll be able to put even more boots on the ground as we save that kind of money. Uh -huh. And that's what we need. That's who keeps us safe. All right. Very good. We're out of time. Awesome. Thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Nice and to meet you. And if you want to find out more about uh, David, uh, HarringtonForSheriff.com. If you forget that, just Google David Harrington. Put Sheriff after that because I Googled your name. A lot of David <laughs> Harringtons throughout the country. So make sure David Harrington, then put OC Sheriff, and then you'll find the link there. That's the easiest way. Nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you. We'll see you Thank you. We'll be back. Good to meet you. Hi, it's Desiree from Irvine Subaru, where families come first. As a family-ran dealership, your family's safety is our number one priority. Come in and find the perfect Subaru from the largest selection of Subarus in Orange County. All models are top safety picks by the Insurance Institute of Highway Safety. We offer the ideal balance of safety, performance, and economy. Irvine Subaru, more Subarus, more safety, more performance, more love. At El Toro Pharmacy, your health needs and your quality of life is our top priority. We can be trusted with all your prescription needs, delivered free to your doorstep. Call us to have your prescription transferred. We will take care of everything, no hassle to you. We are a full-service pharmacy carrying all your over-the-counter medicines at competitive prices. And we offer complete diabetic care and your immunization requirements too. Under new management, come visit us in Molten Plaza. El Toro Pharmacy will never be undersold and we offer the finest after-sales services. Hi, I'm Darla, your new neighbor with Laguna Health and Wellness. We're here to share with you our passion, a better way to care for your body. We specialize in a better way to treat chronic pain, anxiety, major diseases, aging, circulation and detox issues for overall better health. 
We can also make you look younger with our state-of-the-art hydrafacial acupuncture facelifts with zero downtime. Schedule your complimentary consultation today. Welcome back. Well, advances in technology today now allow us to have robotic-assisted anti-reflux surgery. And today I have Dr. William Wallace, who is the Medical Director of General Surgery at Memorial Care Saddleback Medical Center to talk about it. Well, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Well, before we get started, let's go ahead and hear about your background and, and how this came to be with you assist using the robotic system. Sure. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a local kid. I grew up in Tustin, California. I played uh, football at Servite High School, one of my proudest achievements. <laughs> I went to University of California, Riverside, University of Vermont for medical school, and fortunate enough to come back to UCI where I did my surgical training, where it was really just the frontier experimentation in robotic surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I was a general surgeon. I came to Saddleback 15 years ago. I was very fortunate to be able to stay close to my family. And within the last five or six years, robotic surgery for anti-reflux surgery um, has really come along to, originally I thought it was an alternative to the laparoscopic surgery that I have been doing for 15, 20 years, and to, to the point where I believe, and I, I believe the research is showing is actually better operation oh, than wow. laparoscopic with better okay. outcomes, certainly more elegant, and it's more fun to do. As More a fun to do. Yep. Oh, and, wow. and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm really happy with the results that I've been seeing, which is the reason that I'm here today. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about some of the conditions that would lead to possibly needing this type of surgery. Sure. I think most of the people that I operate on um, have reflux and have hiatal hernias. And I think we talked to a bunch of people. In fact, I was just talking to your vice president outside. Oh, oh there's not a confidentiality violation there. Was telling me, hey, I have a hiatal hernia, but I, I'm not experiencing it. I didn't even know I had a hiatal hernia. A lot of people have that and they don't need to do anything about it. It mm -hmm. just means that part of the stomach has popped up into your chest. Right. Unfortunately, as um, that exacerbates, people get reflux. Okay. And hey, now I'm taking protonics, I take some and I'm doing okay. Great, you're fine, you mm -hmm. don't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. It's the people that are having really bad reflux. So I, people I've operated on recently is spontaneous vomiting. They have reflux at night, they have to sleep almost straight up, gets wow. into their throat. <clears throat> <clears throat> chronic cough the next day and a lot of my patients have adult asthma and in my opinion and this is you know I don't think medically found or approved but I've seen a strong association with adult asthma and reflux mm. and when I operate on people and we fix the reflux the adult asthma goes away right. so my patients the people that we would operate on shortness of breath 
uh, chronic coughing, protonics doesn't work anymore, pain, spontaneous vomiting, things like that. Um, there is a role for operating on people who just don't want to take medications for the rest of their life, and I think that's right. very reasonable right. um, as well. Is there something in the body that's actually causing the reflux? I mean, why do you start out with a hiatal hernia first? Sure. Um, I have a great picture um, that we'll show later. Okay. But it boils down to this. Um, when you eat food, the, the pressure in your chest is always higher than the pressure in your belly, in your abdomen. So when you eat food, it goes down your esophagus, bloop, pops into your stomach, and it stays there. Okay. I tell people it's just like a restaurant that has a fan and the flies in the restaurant. Once it flies out, <laughs> fly goes away and can't get back in. Right. That's just the way that you're built dynamically and physiologically when you're born. Okay. Pops in the stomach. When the diaphragm opens up a little bit and the stomach pops up into your chest just a little bit, there is no valve, there is no pressure zone, and it's a free-for-all. Mm. And that's how people get reflux. And mm -hmm. Risk factors are chronic coughing, heavy lifting, straining for bowel movements, uh, liver disease, and just getting older. Oh, okay. When we get older, our tissues just aren't as strong as they were when we were 20. Right, right. Okay, well, let's talk about the surgery itself and how um, a robotic uh, mechanism is now assisting you. And I know we have some pictures, so we'll go ahead and take a look at that, and you can sure. walk us through it. Um, that's a great picture. Um, I think if we were to go 20 years ago, we would have a big up-and-down incision about this big, bunch of retractors right. fixing it. Um, and that, that was quite a deterrent for people. Now we're doing it laparoscopically. When I do it laparoscopically, I make about the same incisions, about eight millimeters, sometimes 10 millimeters. Mm -hmm. I have an assistant on a high definition camera doing our, instrument, doing our instruments. When I do it laparoscopically, the instruments I have can do this. They open and close. Wow. And I'm looking at a two dimensional view. If you tried to do it, you would say, how did you do that? That's amazing, right. 2D. And, just over the years, I can see two-dimensionally, and I know how to manipulate the instruments. Now, are you are you doing that by looking at a screen, or do you have something on your head that helps Great you to question. see it? Great um, question. I'm looking at a monitor, so if I were operating okay. on the patient, I would be looking at this. I'd be looking at the high-definition monitor, using my instruments, asking my partner to move the camera and look around. Okay. Robotically, inside the body, instead of having you know pinchers, I have endo wrists. Oh wow! And the robot can move around, and if you watched me on the robot, you would, you'd be watching me, I would be doing this, it would look like I was doing some kind of yoga class. <laughs> but if you looked at the robot, the robot would be doing one millimeter, right. highly precision maneuvers, mm -hmm. allows me to suit your front hand, bow hand, mm -hmm. tie, mm -hmm. really get great visualization. It's 3D, if I put you on the robot, you could probably do it. I'd wow. have to coach you through it, yeah. and we'd have to get your malpractice, which <laughs> yeah, might be for tough. Sure. <laughs> Um, but, but you could do it and, and, and you, would, you would like it. How much training was involved? Well, it's really, so I would say it's my surgical training, which is four years of medical school, six years of training, and at this point I have 15 years right. um, under my belt. So it's the same operation I'm doing with just different tools. So okay. to get used to doing the tools, I had to go out to the um, San Jose where they have the robot center, um, Intuitive Surgical, which the stock is doing amazing. I'm not. Everyone says it's peaked out. I don't know, I'm not giving any stock advice. <laughs> but it's definitely a well-run company. They've put a lot of money in investing and they're well-trained and they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So you go to the facility, you work on the robot, we work on a animals, um, and then you come back and you work on the patients with a proctor, somebody okay. watching you, which is, which, right. is what I've, which is what I've done. I've probably done about, I'm guessing, 75 to maybe 100 robotic operations at this point. Great. Um, and I feel, so I think the learning curve is about 20 or 30, but. I've done so many hiatal hernias that putting the robot just actually just a transition more than learning. Right. Yeah, I would right. say it's more adapting than learning. Right. All right. Well, let's go to the next slide because that way you can tell us sure. how this works. Um, so this picture right here would be the end product. When we start off, the stomach is up in the chest and what you can see here is there's stitches closing the diaphragm. That's the diaphragm. Before the stitches are there, you can imagine the diaphragm was wide open and the stomach was popped up into the chest and I think we'll see that picture. So what I do is I pull the stomach back down into the abdomen, mm -hmm. I close the defect, and then I take the stomach and I wrap it around itself. Oh, wow. Um, and that creates a valve. Okay. So you can imagine as the stomach inflates or gets um, insufflated with food, it transduces pressure and it creates a valve. And this was discovered by accident in France, huh. I'm going to guess 50 to, uh, 50 to 70 years ago. A young man had a perforated ulcer. The surgeon pulled it down, didn't know how to close the ulcer. He wrapped the stomach around it. That was it. 
Wow. Turns out the kid had horrible reflux his whole life, mm -hmm. and then afterwards his reflux was gone. So they put two and two together and they figured out, hey, maybe this, maybe we were onto something here. Okay. All right. Great. What's now? Well, uh, so yeah. So this is a great picture. This is kind of a systematic on how we do it. So this is the hiatal hernia, where part of your stomach has popped up into your chest, and you can see the defect in the diaphragm is pretty big. I pull it down. I fix the defect, so it looks oh. like it did when you were 20. Then I take the stomach and I wrap it around itself and right. I create the valve. Okay. And just by bringing the stomach into the abdomen changes the pressure zone, right. so the food goes there and stays there. Right. And created the valve reinsures that. Okay. In surgery, we tried many different evolutions of the wrap, and it turns out that that's still the best. Okay. The best way to do it. Okay. All right. And how long does the procedure take? Takes me from the time I actually get started. It takes me about two hours. Sometimes an hour and a half okay. to two hours. Okay. All right. A little bit longer for more complicated. Um, this picture over here is an example of a hiatal hernia. Most of the patients I operate on, this part of the stomach. Half oh, of the stomach, the half, almost half of half it. Half of the The last patient wow. I operated about 66% of the stomach, two thirds well, was up in the chest. I don't know how they could eat anything. Yeah, how could you was, eat anything like yeah. that? Yeah. Well, but she was having a spontaneous vomiting. Oh, she sure. Yeah, she couldn't keep the food down. Oh, that's just awful. So, so she's done great. Now, is this procedure something that insurance would take care oh, of? Oh, absolutely. Okay. This is 100% medically indicated. Right. Um, we tend to get, one, we get people off of proton pump inhibitors, mm -hmm. right? which I, in general I believe is a safe medication. So, right. oh, I need to get off this. I go, I, no, I think it's, well, I read this. No, I think in general it's still pretty safe medication. Right, okay. So if your medication's working really well for you, you don't need to see me. Right. And I'm happy to talk to you about it. But, right. But we're probably not going to operate on you. Right. Um, and then a lot of times inhalers, their breathing gets better, shortness of breath gets better, activity mm -hmm. gets better. They can do more mm -hmm. um, walking and exercising and then overall just healthier. And then what is the recovery time once you've had this surgery? Um, my patients, after I operate on them, I close all their incisions with a plastic surgery closure, mm -hmm. waterproof skin glue, no wound care necessary. Mm -hmm. Put a bunch of numbing medicine in the incision. I keep them overnight. The following morning, we do a swallowing study where they swallow the barium or, or gastrogastrin. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Strawberry flavored. Oh, I bet. <laughs> um, it goes down into the stomach, and I make sure that things are working well. There's no reflux, there's no injury, mm -hmm. and then I send them home. Later that day, full liquids for two weeks. Okay. Anything that you can put through the blender, lattes, smoothies. Mm -hmm. um, I always say mashed potatoes dripping off the spoon. Right. Okay. And then after two weeks, they send me in the office and I advance them to a soft diet, soft mechanical diet, cottage cheese, scrambled eggs, tuna salad. Right. And then after six weeks, you can eat whatever you want. And then, and then I pretty much have everybody fortify small meals. Okay. The rest of it, which is actually the way all of us we should, should do it anyway. Four to five exactly. Small meal. Yeah, dinner should be the smallest meal for everybody. Right. Load up early in the day. Oh, now I'm a nutritionist. Now I'm a nutritionist. Load up early in the day, lunch, small dinner. Right. And then projected for the rest of their life, it will last. Or? Good question. Um, the main reason that I actually am here today. So in general, I wouldn't go around talking about. Uh, I'd love to. If people want me to, I will. But I wouldn't call them. Go. Hey, I need to talk about this. Right. This operation has an 80% long-term success rate. Okay. 80%. Most of the operations that I do have 99 to 100. Okay, so 80% long-term success rate. I would argue that my 20% failures, the people that fail, are still a lot better than they were before. Right. They're just not perfect. Right. So sometimes it's disappointing after surgery, like, this is fantastic, I'm doing great. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it comes back, they get a little bit of reflux. That would be a failure, but they're still better than they were. They're not having spontaneous vomiting. Right. I think part of the problem is the people that aren't doing as well are the ones that keep coming back. They come right. to the GI doctors, the primary care doctors, and then the GI doctors and primary care doctors often say, don't do it, it's right. a bad operation. Mm. What they don't know is that 90% of the people that are doing great don't come back. Right. But when you look at the numbers and you look at the statistics, it's a very good operation with the low complication rate um, and, a, and a good success rate and improves quality of life. Sounds amazing. I mean, technology today, it's been, it's really advancing quickly. Yeah, it's really, it's a great tool for us as surgeons. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate you telling us of the information. My pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And if you have any questions about this particular surgery, go to memorialcare.org forward slash GERD. And we'll be right back after this.
Dr. Christine Chung with 7-Day Dental has served Laguna Woods for 17 years. Her office is close, her staff is the best, and she offers great discounts for Laguna Woods. I have been a patient of Dr. Christine Chung at 7-Day Dental for 15 years. She and her staff are exceptional. You may know me from Village Television. I would not go anywhere else for dental care than 7-Day Dental. 7-Day Dental, simply your best choice. South County Lexus, we really are different. We're California's exclusive Lexus Plus dealer. Lexus Plus is a new way of doing business. At a Lexus Plus dealer, you can expect an upfront, negotiation-free, hassle-free price right on the vehicle. The same price you'll find on our website all the way through the transaction. South County Lexus, we feel this is the way of the future, and this is the way the customer prefers to do business. South County Lexus, your exclusive Lexus Plus dealer. Different, just like you. We're a family business. I have my wife, my two sons that work in the business with me. So we really actually are a family run business. We call them our extended family. We do it from the moment they walk into the office. We actually have personal relationships and friendships with our clients. They're not just a client, they are part of our friends and family. That's what we do here at Sterling Financial Advisors. We help people get peace of mind and quality of life in retirement. And welcome back, and Lisa is going to tell you about yes. Dakota Fanning yes. in this movie coming up on Friday. And it's called Please Stand By, and it has Dakota Fanning and Tony Collette, and it's directed by Ben uh, Lewin. A young art autistic woman runs away from her caregiver in order to boldly go and deliver her 500-page Star Trek script to a writing competition in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. She's on an adventure full of laughter and tears, and Wendy is the character's name, played with exquisite delicacy by Dakota Fanning, follows the guiding spirit of Mr. Spock. Have you ever had a guiding spirit, Mr. No, Spock? No, On her journey into the unknown. I mean, I bet she believes that this is who is guiding her, which is great, and it is there for us to conquer, not to fear. That's Friday, May 25th. It looks cute. I mean, I saw the, actually the previews of it, and uh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, the backbone of this movie is about autism. Right. And at the very end of the credits, they do give information on where to get help for autism. Perfect. So, but you got to wait to literally the end of the credits. Well, I so. always sit through the credits anyway because yeah. it always takes so many people to make a movie. That's you true. You got to see it. Now, uh, the other movie that we are showing uh, coming up that is on Monday is The Girl with the Pearl Earring and uh, a very young Scarlett Johansson because this was 2003. So, oh. very young. She was probably. I don't know how old she is now, but she was probably about 1920 then. Yeah. And if you, this is a, based on a very famous painting that was done by uh, Johannes Vermeer's most enduring portrait, and it becomes the focus of this biographical period piece with the girl with the pearl earring is told from the point of view of a teenage girl who leaves her family to family to, who leaves her family's care to become a servant for the artist mm. and eventually becomes the subject of the painting. Mm. So, um, you know, it's kind of a love story, kind of uh, uh, a little bit historical. I did not know anything about this painting, but I guess it's a very famous mm. painting. Do you oh. know this painting? Nope. The Girl with the Pearl Earring. Nope. All right, well, you can find but out. But now I do. On Monday, <laughs> yes. Speaking of Monday, it is Memorial Day. Right. And uh, because of that, <coughs> excuse me, um, there's going to be a great presentation over at the Performing Arts Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, they're going to have folks from the United States Marine Corps, the Korean American Choir, the American Legion, the, the Post here, 254, and the All-American Boys Chorus. And tickets are free at the Performing Box Office, only four per manor. So if you'd like to join in on this on Memorial Day, it is at noon at uh, over there. So just head on over. And I do think you can get tickets in advance. Uh, they are free, and, but only four per manor. So that'll be oh. a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah. Hopefully we have some better weather for Monday. Uh, yes, well, I we'll think we will. We'll check in with Ken later in the week to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> I think we will. So tell us yeah, the Comedy Club. Thursday, the Comedy Club is uh, going to have Debbie Casper. <laughs> And she's been making people laugh for decades. She is one of the hardest hitting comedians on the circuit. 
Whether at a comedy club, on a cruise ship, or at a private function, her wit appeals to everyone. And as a performer, she has won the prestigious Dramalogue Award for Best Comedic Performance in her one-person show. And then Joey Simmons uh, will be the MC. And residence is $7. You must show your ID. Non-residents can come. Uh, guess, of course, $12. And no seats are saved after 6.30 p.m. And there's uh, doors and cash bar open at 6 p.m. And the show starts at 7. And hard of hearing devices are available. Coffee and cookies. And if you, have any, if you want any information or have any questions, contact Surrey at 949-454-1572. That's That'll be it. Fun. I know. Yeah. Super funny. And another quick fun thing I want to tell you about is the New York Club is actually doing a trip oh, up yeah. to Big Bear. This fun. will be Sunday, June 3rd. So this will be a week from this coming Sunday. It's $89 per person. So it's uh, I think it's all inclusive. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that includes. Um, yes, it does. It includes, obviously, uh, the drive up there aboard the bus. And then you'll take a narrated cruise on the Big Bear Lake with the Big Bear Queen Paddle Boat Tour. Fun. I didn't even know they had that up there. And it'll, um, you'll get a, um, a guided tour of the history of Big Bear and includes a three-course three lunch. Mm. So in the afternoons, browse the shops in downtown Big Bear and then you'll head back later that uh, day. So this is $89 per person, all inclusive. That sounds fun. Yeah, so and it will please. be beautiful too. Oh, it'll be it should be really nice. 949-637-1602 for sign up. So go to the New York Club uh, listed on the uh, website. Cool. So quickly, speaking of weather, yes. they're above all this stuff. That's right. right. Now. So it's sunshine no up there right drizzles. now. Not for us. Uh, this this layer is actually about uh, goes up to about four thousand feet. So it's a thick layer. It's gonna stay with us today with some drizzle possible, like not as much as we had yesterday, but there is a chance of drizzle. Today, tomorrow, and Thursday, then things are going to start to warm up and clear up, I should say. And there's I not too much change so. in temperature for the weekend. I'm kind of tired of this. I yeah. feel like I live in Oregon. Yeah, it does feel <laughs> that way. I, the only, you know, the only good side of this is that, uh, right. you know, I can turn my sprinklers down to just maybe one day this right. week. It's not a lot of moisture, right. but it's cool enough. It's fine. My hair is hating it. Well. So we need to have some sunshine. Okay, tomorrow we have Shirley Witt and Cheryl Whelan with the Senior Center. Tim Moy is here with our security update. And we've got Lisa Bartlett. Actually, she cannot make it Oh, tomorrow. she can't make it. I just it. found that out. All right. So well, she'll be we'll, on next month. Though. We'll have some other goodies for you tomorrow. Yes. Take All care. Right. Yeah, I got worried.